Hello and welcome back to Galgorm Hall for this fourth episode in the Scratch Build series. In tonight's episode I want to look at fitting the brickwork to the chimney and painting the entire structure ready for installing the windows and the doors. Now before we get to the brickwork on this chimney the eagle-eyed amongst you may see that there is a little bit of a change to the bottom of the building. I was actually driving past this building just last week and it caught, you know, as I go past it every time I just take another wee look at it and I noticed that on the bottom of the building right the way around is um, basically another little pl plaster relief similar to the coins um, but just along the bottom and actually along the the, the, uh, the ridge lines too although I think that may well be more um, barge boards which we'll, we'll look at at a later date so I have actually started fitting these um, on to one side now it's, I've used the plastic card and it's just um, 0.5mm um, plain plastic card and I've cut it in a 3mm strip so a 3mm wide strip and basically I'm just taking a full length of plastic card cutting a strip of it and then I'm cutting it to length and I'm using the rocket glue to fit it to the walls now I find that the rocket glue with the plastic card does take a little bit of time for it to dry against this sandpaper so I've only got certain sections of it done now it's not a necessity if you're building this that you want you know to add that little bit of detail onto it but having gone past it myself and wanting to sort of keep it fairly close to the original I've decided to go with that so I will fit the the, the other two sections here and the one at the back um, at a later date but tonight I want to concentrate on the um, the bricks of the chimneys with yourselves as you can see I have done one side already and this is really just to give me a run through to make sure I knew what I was talking about before I told you uh, what I was talking about, if you know what I mean. We are using, um, this is Slater's plastic card and this particular one that I'm using is the Flemish Bond uh, embossed card. I like the Flemish Bond I like it because whenever I'm building a lot of my scratch builds they tend to be older buildings and if you look at those older buildings they tend to have a more erratic uh, brickwork to them and the closest that you can sort of get to that in plastic plastic card form is this Flemish Bond stuff. Now again it's not a necessity you could go with a much simpler um, sort of standard sort of you know staggered brick um, option instead if you wished um, but for me I wanted to go down this route now again the brickwork isn't 100% necessary if you didn't want to invest in some of this plastic card um, you could just use the sandpaper method right round the entire uh, chimney stack or alternatively you could use some of the uh, paper products that are out there whether it be from Metcalf scale scenes um, or you know Wordsworth Railways that sort of thing there so it's entirely up to you but I do like the embossed plastic card on a building I like I like the structure to have uh, some sort of relief to it uh, and this would be one of my favorite products to work with so what do we need to do well basically on this chimney here I need to measure the height of that chimney from the base of the sandpaper to the top of the chimney so I'm just taking it out of the screen a minute so I can see and we're at 10, 10 millimeters for that now um, the plastic card the brick courses are roughly one millimeter um, one millimeter wide each of the the bricks so it's really ten courses of brick that we are looking to uh, to cut here which is that one there and I am just going to cut a full strip of this plastic card I've 
changed the blade on my craft knife after all that uh, sandpaper work the other one was as blunt as get out so it's time to put a new blade in okay and with that plastic card now we can form the entire brickwork right round the, the stack before I do that I'm going to turn it over and I'm going to put a big arrow that way and I'll explain that to you in a minute so take the building back again and the width of this building is let's get to the markings that I can actually see what is that 12 12 millimeters for the width of my chimney so I am going to cut my first bit of plastic card 13 millimeters and the reason for that 10 13 the reason for that is that it gives it just an overlap in which then we can miter the corners which will give a much cleaner join um, going around the edges if you look at this one here for example the join is much neater whenever you miter them in so by overlapping it is extending out the end of the chimney a little bit you'll do that the whole way around and on this one here I'm going to put that arrow which matches that one and the reason for doing that is that whenever it comes to cutting the next section we're going to use this bit and if I don't have the arrow on it if whenever we turn it over let's bring it up closer to the camera so this is the correct cut where each of the bricks join together properly but if I put it the other way around well actually that turns out that it's more or less correct but it may well be that your brick course will be out of alignment and it's just sort of to try and keep that continuity going round right round the brick as much as you can um, so there's, you know, it just looks a little bit better so with a little bit of sandpaper what's this stuff? P800 that's sort of like a wet and dry sandpaper we're going to miter our edges and we're literally just taking the edges of it like that and rubbing it and hopefully you can see there that there's a little angle on it and we'll do the same on the other side now I tend not to run it that way I would rather do it this way here if you run it this way here you run the risk of curving the edges of the plastic card and then you've got a much bigger gap happening in you know, at your joins okay so that's when it's ready and we can glue it on now for the plastic card onto the card we're going to use Yoohoo again you could use the rocket glue if you wish although I do find that the, um, the the gluing time's a wee bit slow on it um, it can be too fast actually I'm mixing myself up here uh, where's my arrow and we're just going to place that in we'll try and spread that around a bit try not and get the glue to squirt out the bottom onto the cement because it will show up whenever we go to paint it and we're trying to align that as dead center as we can that those little mitered sections are over each side like that there and then if we see it from this side here you can just about see the mitered edges peering out the side and then we'll repeat it for the this side and then the back 
and then finally the, the, the other side okay so I will go and finish that off hopefully that's enough explanation in that to show you what to do in actual fact what I might do is I'll, I'll do the next bit and I'll show the two going together to mitre it and then I'll carry on so the next one is Well, the chimney itself is just four, four millimeters, so we will make that five millimeters. Okay, so we have this one ready, and that one will go in here, and you see by, hopefully you can see in that there, by mounting the edges, we get a much cleaner contact. And a much sharper join and also the brick is in, in alignment and will follow right round this is very difficult to show you while in front of the camera but hopefully you get the idea there so look I'll go away and finish this on cam off camera um, and then come back to you whenever we look at doing the little bit of relief around the top Okay, with that done, it is time to do the um, the little bit of relief around the, the chimney, just to sort of give it a little bit of extra definition. And how you do that is taking that same um, plastic card, what you want to do first is take two courses of brick, And trim and then a single course of brick and trim it again okay and then with each of those two you're going to glue the single course on top of the double course and whenever you are gluing it make sure that you glue for example there's a large brick there so have a little half brick in the center of that large brick we don't want it to look like that and glue that in place and leave it to dry for a good half hour or so and you're left with a little strip just like that there and then it's exactly the same process as you've done on the brick well, what I do first is on the reverse with a craft knife take a 90 degree angle I'm not going to be able to get this in shot I don't think take a 90 degree or sorry a 45 degree angle and cut down through the plastic card and that'll give you your first mitered section and then put it up against your brick and on the inside of that mitre cut which is there that should match with the corner of the chimney so mark the other side the we mark in there for the other side and then again with your craft knife you're going in from a 45 degree on that line outwards which will give you your mitre it'll give you your mitered corners for that section and then that can be glued into place and for that there, I'm using the the Revel contactor. It's very quick drying and glues the plastics together well. So again, I finish that off and we'll come back to finish the last wee bit, which is just a little um, bit to hide the top. Okay, so with the, um, the little brick relief onto the edge of the, the chimney, that just leaves putting the little capping on uh, the top 
which in time will be painted sort of a grey cement colour and chimneys applied above that. And all I've done with that is I've measured the length and the width of the top of the chimney sort of to maybe within half a millimetre of the edge. Cut a plastic piece of plain plastic card and then I've cut another piece of plastic card just slightly smaller to step it up. And that only needs to get glued on with a bit of the Revel contact. And put into place. And just all the way around it should. Now you're going to see <laughs> that my chimney is slightly wonky to one side but never mind we can't have perfection sure eh? so and just place it on that there's a little bit of a, an edge to the brick okay so we're going to let that dry completely and then we'll paint this brick before priming the entire building but while i let that dry i might as well get the rest of these little strips put along the bottom so we'll come back to you once we're at the painting stage okay so the um the chimneys have now had time to set and I've also finished off adding the little strips to the front and the back. I haven't done this side here because that, as um, sort of covered before, it was an, an additional extension at a later date. But we're now on to the painting of the brickwork. Now I'm going to keep this as quickly as possible do this as quickly as possible um, this is something that I have covered in another video and if you do want to follow it in a little bit more detail the links in the top of the screen now and um, but basically my approach for um, painting the brickwork is as such as you see on this one I've already applied the first coat and we are using um, Revel's what is it? Matte 85, matte 85 brown. Okay, and all I'm going to be doing is applying it. I'm using a fairly wide paintbrush there, and we're just going to cover, do the initial coverage of the brickwork in this. making sure we do the top edges too because they will be visible at a later date the the little squares that we added on to we will add paint to that afterwards okay so that's both uh, that's both of them done now this one was done last night so i can demonstrate the next stage to you now let me just clean my brush Okay, so the next stage is going to be applying a coat of Revels Mat 37, which is reddish brown. Now, I'm only going to be doing this chimney now um, because I need to let that other one dry. But basically what we're doing is we're applying a coat of this reddish brown to the brickwork as we did before. And then, before we move round to the next stage, I'm taking a bit of kitchen roll and I'm blotting most of it back off again. So hopefully you can see you're getting the little highlights of the orange coming through below and there's also some, um, let's get that into focus, and there's also some of that reddish brown and whenever we apply the wash over the top of that it will give colour variances to the brickwork. We'll just do that again. Okay, let's see as that is there. So I will finish this. I will get the other one done and then I'll come back to you whenever we're doing 
the final little bit, bit of detailing on it. Um, in the meantime, I'll paint the tops of these here too um, to bring them in with the same colour and then I'll show you the final little bit of a wash before we look at treating the, uh, the rest of the building. Okay. Okay, so those little detailing bits are added. Um, the little squares or the rectangles on the chimney top have been painted with Revels 75 stone grey. And you'll also see that I've added a little bit of detailing to the brickwork. Um, I've basically just tried to find a couple of bricks sort of more or less centre on the wall and put a wee dab of Revels uh, 16 sandy yellow on there and I've done that at both sides. I was going to do it on the inside but the, the brickwork is just too um, un, uncentered, off centred um, for me to be able to do that but certainly to have it on the outside just adds a little bit of detailing. Don't worry about getting the paint into the uh, the mortar joints as long as it doesn't sort of go over onto the next brick and um, that's not an issue really because what we're going to do now is apply that mortar wash now again um, that video uh, that was posted on the, the the top corner will show you in more detail as to how I go about doing this but essentially I'm using um, uh, a, a a grey sort of a homemade grey mix it's just made from black and white acrylic paint and I've t mixed it to a colour that I'm sort of happy with um, and we're just going to apply it on solid just like that and then with the paper tile we're just going to rub it all off And this is going to be fiddly because of all the uh, well the size of it first start but also just those little brick relief details on the top makes it a little bit harder but just work a small section at a time you'll just do the one side at a time hopefully you can see that and that just adds our mortar relief into it um, it will dry slightly lighter than, than that too so that's basically the printing or the painting of the brickwork we need to weather the top of that at a later date but that's not an issue for now so again i go away and i'll finish this and then the last bit we're going to look at today is the um, priming of the the full building Okay, so as you can see, I have been uh, doing a little bit more work on this. Um, the building has now been primed. What I've used for this is Halford's Grey Primer. Now, any primer will suit the task um, for doing this. Halford's just has one of those primers um, that I find and a lot of other modelers find is very, very good for their modeling projects. Um, I was going to video this bit, but to be honest, it had to be done outside. It was all a wee bit sort of um, needing both hands, you know, to, to work with the primer and to turn the, the building, so it became a little bit difficult. The one thing I will point out is ensure that you mask up your chimney prior to priming. I have used uh, Tamiya's masking tape. Now, it's very good. Um, it's a low tack um, masking tape and it means whenever you peel back the stuff afterwards you don't run that risk of uh, peeling off paintwork um, from what you've done previously. Um, you can use standard sort of you know decorators masking tape but they do tend to be a little bit more tacky and you will run that risk of peeling off that you know all that hard work that you've done. So this video is beginning sort of to get to the end um, of this stage. It's, it's perhaps been a bit a little bit boring. It really is just has been a painting video as I said at the beginning. But these these jobs are important obviously. 
The one final thing that needs to be done is painting these coins. Now I've had a look through my paint box. I can't find a colour that is completely um, matching that of the prototype. But what I did find, oh, there's that off now, um, already sets that off an awful lot better. You see there, you know, against the grey. Um, but what I did find was this tin of Humbrol. It's Humbrol Matte 70. Uh, I don't know what that colour is to hand, but I will check it and I will put it into the uh, description below. So it's a sort of a rusty colour, but I think that would work just fine on that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and apply this now. It's um, it's going to be a slow, painstaking job because I want to try and get all these this edging done. Um, let's just have a look at that on it. That's all right. It's quite nice, so it is. So that'll work well with that. So look, I'll carry on and I'll finish this. You don't need to watch me painting coins and uh, and mouldings. Um, and whenever I finish this, I'll just put a couple of finishing photos up at the end just to show the stage that we're at now. Next time, uh, we'll get in back into a little bit of actual modelling. Um, next stage is we're going to install the doors and the windows front and back to the building. Uh, depending on how long that takes, I may well also look at um, the main shop door, but I'll see sort of time-wise how, how we're getting on with that. But the, the main goal is to get the doors and the windows installed next time round. So once again, thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel before, please uh, consider doing so. If you haven't come across this series of videos before, click on the link in the top corner there, um, or uh, you know, go into the description and you will come across some of the older videos from this series. But for the time being, uh, thanks for watching and chat soon.